Hello and welcome to this little guide where I will show you some very basic uh, introduction into how to start developing iOS apps with Swift. Uh, this is mostly for my students uh, and I will be doing this um, introduction in English, uh, which is not what I usually do uh, because it's not my native tongue. Uh, but I thought it would be uh, easier to use uh, since most of the things uh, we will go through today will be in English. We'll be, we'll be following the uh, start developing guide from Apple's uh, developer page. Uh, and this is the one they have online right now. Uh, this is their first step in how to dev make apps for iPhone. Uh, and we're gonna use uh, Swift for this. Um, so we're gonna jump right in and uh, we're gonna look at uh, the basic UI. Uh, if there is need I will do more video guides like this, uh, but I just want to do a video guide just, just very easily to just jump into it. This guide um, will assume that you have no knowledge whatsoever about uh, developing uh, apps for iPhone. That this will be maybe your very first app. And we'll take it, you know, slow and easy, so there will be no uh, confusion. Okay, uh, and the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna, or this is our first app we're gonna do, is gonna do something like this when it's done. Uh, here it looks like uh, some screenshot from an iPhone, right? Uh, and it will be an app to give grades to different food that we like or dislike. Okay, so let's get into it. First we're going to do is we're going to have to download the software to uh, make our apps. And it's very easy, it's free, it's called Xcode. And uh, what we need to do is just go to the App Store and find our app. So we press the Apple up here and then press App Store. I should mention this too, that uh, uh, this guide will require very little coding knowledge. Uh, this means that basically you could open up your, this computer for your very first time and know n almost nothing about computers and still be able to follow this guide. Uh, but um, the more you will learn, the better you will be at developing new apps in the future. And of course those apps might require much more knowledge about how to code when you step off the rails and do it by yourself. Okay, I search for Xcode. And uh, as you can see, I have already installed it. You probably, if you haven't, don't have this on computer, you have an install button here. Fill in your Apple ID. Remember, it's free, so there's no worries about that. Might get some, uh, uh, ask some questions about the, your security level on your computer if you want to uh, enable certain things and so on. If you should feel free to accept everything here. Should be fine. And after you have installed this, this is a fairly big app. I think it's about five gigabytes. This is the one I have right now anyway. And remember, as you can see, this is version 7.2.1. So if you have a previous version or a newer version, uh, which has come out after this, yours might look a little bit different than mine, but should probably about be about the same. And uh, it's, you know, for developing apps for either for iPhone, iPad, uh, iOS, bas basically, the system behind uh, iPhone. Okay, we open up. Uh, and since this might be the first time you open up uh, your Xcode, uh, it will maybe look a little bit different than mine. Uh, I get some kind of greeting screen um, uh, when I open up this first time. And as I said before, yours might look a little bit different. Uh, if you ignore the middle part and just focus on up here to the left instead, you press File, and you press New, and you press sorry, and you press uh, Playground. Okay, good. Uh, yeah, and the same time we I'm gonna follow it here and um, in the guide from Apple. Uh, first step they have here is basically just a lot of pretty pretty detailed introduction into what Swift is, that is the language we're using now, the coding language, and uh, some tips along the way. If you want to, read it now, read it later, it's good to know, uh, but you will probably not remember all of this now. This was something you will learn the more you use it. 
continue into a basic UI. This means a user interface, right? Uh, and uh, yeah, when we're done with this first step, we will look something like this. Okay. Good. So far, so good. Okay. Um, we're just gonna make uh, this. Oh, did I say uh, playground? Sorry, I meant project, right? Uh, file new project, not playground. And we choose uh, single view application. And press next. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna do make an example here. Uh, so the product name and organization and so on. You can change this. You can be creative and choose a different name. Uh, but I'm gonna follow pretty much the same idea that um, Apple has. They, they want to name the food name name the product a food tracker. Uh, I will change it to food for you. And uh, I have an organization. This is BT Creations, like an old, like just a name I use sometimes. Uh, but you can use different, yeah, do do whatever you want here. The only thing you should uh, make sure here is that this second one, uh, include unit test, is selected, and the other two are unselected. Um, what else should we change? Uh, I think that's pretty much it. Uh, make sure you use Swift here. This is the new language from Apple. Uh, this is pretty recent. Organization name and last download. Yeah. Okay. Next, and we choose a place uh, where we should have this uh, on our computer. Uh, the default location is perfectly fine. This uh, folder is the one I have already finished this project before. So we, but I will just press create button and it's done. Okay, good. And, and now you have the main menu here. Here you have everything you need. Might be a little bit daunting at first, but don't be scared. It's gonna, nothing gonna, bad is going to happen. You're going to be completely fine. Uh, the first thing we're going to change is uh, what device we want to uh, you know, preview our app on uh, to see how it looks like. And that's pretty easy. Uh, Apple goes through what is the different areas, names are, and so on. And they talk about the simulator. A simulator is where you preview your apps and make it look like, uh, take a look how it looks like. And it will be up here. You say, I have our name of the app, food for you. And then it says iPhone 6S Plus. If you press here, you get a little list of different devices you can preview the app on. And uh, basically, you have to get an idea of how it will look like on different screens. You can change this later if you want. Uh, I will use an iPhone 6s. Uh, this is the recent one right now. Probably going to be iPhone 7s and so on in the future. Uh, and the plus is well, that's the way if you have a little bit bigger screen like I have it with my phone. But uh, I will use this one, iPhone 6s. Good. And uh, yeah, then we just uh, start this up. Uh, this we start our app, and with this we start by pressing the play button. Click play. And you will notice, yeah, build success, succeeded, very good, everything worked. And then you will have a new little window down here in the menu, it says simulator, this is the, your iPhone starting up, this is like a fake, fake iPhone, right? This is not a real iPhone, uh, we can move around a bit, uh, pretending to be an iPhone, right? And you can see it's completely white, we haven't done anything with our app yet, it's, it's completely normal. Uh, yeah, and we can just close this, uh, press simulator quit simulator. Cool. So it will be very easy to see how our app looks like the more we do um, create our app, uh, the more things we will add to it. It will be super easy to see how it looks like. We don't have to install it on our own iPhone. We don't even have to own an iPhone for this. Uh, and I should just mention that also that if you later you want to uh, publish uh, your app on the real app store, this will be a longer process where you will have to pay some money most likely to um, to get a, uh, the right um, requirements to be allowed to publish on App Store. This is not something you can just press a button and it will be on App Store. It's more complicated than that. But uh, to actually make the app, not so complicated. It's fairly easy. Uh, basically, you have already created the first app here. Already, it's just that it says your app is empty. 
Okay, and uh, we have a few things on the left-hand side. Uh, some of it looks very complicated, it looks like it's a lot of code and so on. Don't have to worry about this right now. We focus mostly on this one, which is called uh, the main storyboard. Uh, to the left here. Uh, Apple explains a lot of things, what the different things does and so on. Uh, read it when you have time. I usually recommend that you just jump right into it and start playing with it. It's usually how the, the, the fastest way to learn. But it's always good to just step back sometimes and take a look what it actually means. Okay, so let's add our first thing to our scene here. So this is what you have here in front of you is the view controller. Basically how it will look like on your iPhone. You even have a little battery thing here, which you probably recognize from your own iPhone if you have one. Uh, it I, I wish I also mentioned this. I'm using an, a, a laptop when I make this. Maybe some of you do, do this, maybe some of you don't. You will probably feel it's a little bit cluttered, a little bit too small, actually, sometimes to, to see how it looks like. Uh, I really recommend, therefore, to use a really big monitor when you develop apps. It's a really good idea. Uh, but it works with a laptop, too, of course. Uh, I will show you some tips for how to really use the best of your sc uh, screen capacity. Okay, uh, so adding things to a new app is super easy. It cannot be more simple. Uh, we're going to add, let's see what the first thing they recommend. I think there is some text field, right? Yeah, te text field. So all the way down here, we have a little filter uh, window. This is a faster way to find things. You don't have to like scroll through menus and so on. You just write what you want to have. I want to have a text field. Good, it's here. And to add it to our, uh, well, even have a little explanation what it is. Uh, what you do is you just press and hold and then drag it to where you want to have it. You see you have a little window here. Uh, Apple recommends that you uh, drag it until you see this blue line across the screen. You see, there it is. And just, you know, somewhere where it feels good. Good, excellent, that's it. And uh, we're moving on. Uh, yeah, I should mention that now too. Uh, so if you feel like this screen is a little bit too big, what you could do is uh, you can zoom it out and in. Uh, you go to Editor, Canvas. Canvas is the basically the edges of the app. And then go all the way to zoom. So you see it's a little bit it's difficult to find. Uh, unfortunately, in this version, they only have 100% and 50%. I think 50% is a little bit too small, as you can see here. And 100 is a little bit too big. Uh, that's a little bit problematic, I think. But that's the way it is. 100% uh, is best for me. Okay, uh, what else should we add? Uh, let's do... Um, well, we should um, first of all maybe change the size of this uh, text field. It's a little bit small. So we press it one time and then press the boxes on the side here and hold and drag. And I'm going to push it all the way to the other side uh, where I get the blue lines to, s to show that it's all the way to the other side of that. Uh, in this case, iPhone 6S screen. Good. And. Uh, we should also name this, like have some um, text in the box for the first time people uh, uh, want to fill in this text. So we press, uh, first of all, uh, this little text box here, and then we press the inspector, this little, what should we call it, down arrow thing here, the attributes in inspector, and we want to change the placeholder text. Press here and says, uh, what does Apple say we should write? Enter meal here. Uh, enter the food for, well, food here. So, good. And you notice that very great text here is changed to enter food here. Apple also recommend that we change the, the, the layout of the keyboard when people actually write things in this box. And uh, we should change uh, how the return key looks like. Um, it says here it's changed into default. Uh, but they recommend that since this is something something that people should in write and then put input something, then we should use the done button. Of course, this button will um, change develop depending on what language the user has, uh, but it will signify what is the function of this button. So it's, it's important to change return key to done.